Hello everyone. Um, I wondered whether uh, anyone wanted to learn how to do Japanese patchwork. Uh, I know Jeannie was looking for some quick ideas to do for uh, a craft table um, and I know she was also quilting at one time so she may already know this pattern. Um, but I'll show you anyway and uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, but you can make lots of different things with this particular type of patchwork. Now here, um, here's an example. No, it's not new. It's been it's been out for a long, long time. Japanese patchwork, but it's quite simple to do. Uh, and all it is. Two pieces of material, an outer piece and an inner piece. The outer piece is a circle. The inner piece is a square of wadding and a square of fabric. And the idea is to put your fabric square on the circle fold them over and join them. But I'm running before I'm walking so uh, let's start from the beginning and I'll tell you what you need. This is a paper template, just a circle and mm, you can make these circles any size that you want. This is uh, just over 16 centimetres. And then you need to cut a circle of card. And the circle of card needs to be smaller by about 2 centimetres. So you've got your outer circle about 16 centimetres and the inner circle 14 centimetres but this inner one has to be card and I'll show you why. Right I've cut out a piece of fabric to match this large template 16 centimetres in diameter and I've stitched on the sewing machine a little gathering stitch all around the edge and when you've done that don't cut any threads and don't pull it up yet take your cardboard that you've cut out and this one I've already done take your cardboard put it on top of your circle of fabric and pull the threads so that you gather this piece of fabric over the card. So can you see what I've done? I've just pulled the threads, gathered the threads over the circle of card, the card which is 14 centimetres in diameter. Pull it up and then what I've done is iron that because I want a line around the edge that I can follow so you can either iron it or press it, not too long because that's card and it'll get soggy. But once you've done that, don't cut the thread as I say. Loosen off the stitching slightly. Because what you want to do is take out the card. So I'm taking out the card. Pull it up again slightly and you've got this circle ready to use. So place your circle down, right side down and pull this up a little bit more so as it lies a little bit better. Right. 
Now take a piece of wadding and the wadding is nine inches square. Take a piece of fabric, face up nine inches square and put it on top of the wadding. Then place it so that each corner of the square touches, almost touches the edge of the circle. Can you see what I've done there? To just bring it nearer for you. And what you do, as we've done here on this one, fold in each side and pin. Just stop here and get my pins. Right, take your time when you're pinning. What I like to do is just put one pin in for now, turn it. And then when I've put all of the pins in, and they all look pretty much the same, it's not a very good pin. I like to tap mine to ma make sure that they're all in place properly and neatly. So I think you get the gist of what you have to do. Um, might be an idea to just put a pin in the centre to keep that flat. And turn these over and they're almost touching at the corner and that gives you a shape so that's one that I finished I tacked it all round and then I hem stitched each little half moon um, it's nice in the contrasting uh, Christmas fabrics because uh, you could use it as a candle mat at Christmas by joining four. Join four together. Pop a, um, a candle in the centre. Just this a little bit. Uh, you could use these as. Um, coasters. You could use different fabrics, pretty fabrics uh, together, make a needle case by sewing two together down one side and then open it out and you can put some felt inside for needles and pins. You can sew all around the three edges, put some stuffing inside, sew it up and you've got a little pin cushion. Or I do little gifts for craft fairs or oh, stocking fillers, something like that. Um, I've joined lots of these and made a quilt. I made I just made these up because I've got uh, three, six, nine, and on each side turn that one into a cushion cover. And instead of hemming around here, I did a running stitch to keep these to keep these little flaps down. So it can be quite effective depending on the type of fabric you use. I've just used this as a
contrast colour so that you can see. Um, but it's endless what you can do with these little squares. I did make a bag, uh, a tote bag, but instead of joining them all together like a square and putting a handle on, I did them at an angle. And that was quite effective. Um, so you can do absolutely all sorts with it. Once you get to um, be familiar with that technique. So, your outer fabric, 16 centimetres, your inner cardboard has to be 14. You need that gap all around. Do a little running stitch all the way around. If you haven't got a sewing machine, do it by hand. Pull up your work, press it, press all that once you've gathered it up. Take it off the card, which leaves you with the circle. Put your fabric in the centre with your wadding and then just pin it all down. I don't know whether I've been in camera sh shot all the way through that but um, I think you might get the idea and uh, it's something you can do sitting watching the TV which is what I like about it it's a way of using up your uh, unwanted materials I suppose scraps of materials as long as you've got something that size of course and uh, nine centimeters square for the inside but uh, you, it doesn't matter what size you do uh, you can make up your own sizes as long as this square of fabric that you cut in the center touches each side of your circle well i hope that was of interest to someone out there uh, quite enjoyed making these. It's a change at times from uh, the usual crafting. So enjoy ladies and thank you for looking in. Bye for now. Bye.